Let's start with the quick example using the central limit theorem. So, here we have a fair coin is tossed a hundred times and 60 heads are observed. The question is, what's the probability in the foot? To start off with, by using the central limit theorem, we get because p is 0.5, since the coin is fair, the p hat is approximately normal. This mean is p. And the variance is the p1 take p on n. Now note that in the normal distribution specification here, we give the variance. So be careful. Some uh, other people and some other books will use the derivation. They will use variance. Be careful with it. Note, however, that r requires the standard deviation of the variance. Let's look at that carefully. So the, sam the observed sample proportion of heads here is 60 over 100, that's 0 0.6. Then we can calculate probability here that p hat is bigger than 0 0.6. So here I've got 1 minus probability. This is p norm. I want less than or equal to here. <coughs> Sorry, I want bigger than or equal to here. So bigger than 0 0.6. So it's 1 minus probability of being less than 0 0.6. So all I've got here is 1 minus probability that p hat is less than 0 0.6. Whether it's less than or equal to doesn't matter here for continuous distributions. So that is the same as probability that p hat is bigger than 0 0.6. So I've got here 0 0.6, which is I want probability of bigger than 0 0.6. So this is one less than uh, equal to 0 0.6. So it's 0 0.6 in my value for which I want the probability. The mean here is 0 0.5, and the standard deviation is the square root of 0 0.5 times 0 0.5 over 100. And so I get my full probability here is 0 0.02275. All right, we can have a look at that more closely and ask questions afterwards if you wish. Now, what we're going to look at very briefly over here, and I'll go through this fast, just to read, you can read this yourself, is the idea here behind the sampling distribution of P hat is that if I repeat this sampling many times, and from each sample I calculate a value for P hat, what I'll get is, that all the values that are calculated from these samples will approximate a normal distribution. So that's all we're going to do over here. In the next few slides, we'll actually simulate this. And the condition is going to be that NP must be bigger than 10, and N times 1 minus P is also bigger than 10. Some people use 5 over here, and I find 5 is good enough here as well, but it doesn't really bother us here. Either way, what we're going to do here is we're going to sample lots of times from this binomial distribution of binary trials here and get lots of samples and work out what's going on here. So you can understand what's going on here. In the calculations I've got here, I've got several samples from binary trials over here. So if you look at this from the, the table I have, oops, further down here, I've got 1 to 10,000. And each of this is a sample of size of 1,000. So the sample size here, 1,000 here. And for each of those columns, I've got the mean here for a the Bernoulli uh, P0.4544, you can see that my each of those sample proportions are close to the value 0.45 at least. So here's the R code, you can look at this afterwards if you wish and ask questions again. But here is the histogram of all those 10,000 sample proportions. And you can see that it is very close to a normal distribution. And the mean here works out to be 0.4542331 for the whole lot. And uh, so in other words, I've taken the mean of all the P hats, and that's close to the 0.4544. And the variance here is 0 0.000246, which is very close to the P minus times 1 minus P over N observed. So that's very close as well. So that, in some way, if you like, is an exploration of what this distribution will look like when it's close to what we think it is. Finally, we'll take a look at a few more estimation things and inference things. So be careful, though, that what we're saying here is that the simulation provides information about one particular situation. In other words, for a given sample size, our sample size here was 1,000. For other sample sizes, yes, you will still find if the sample size is large enough then that the sample proportions will be approximately normal, but of course with a different mean and different variance. So, what we look at next is this idea of confidence interval. So, if I'm trying to estimate a population proportion, then I can get a sample proportion p hat, but that's only a single value. 
and as such it's not very useful. I would also like some idea of variation. In other words, if I sample once I get a value of p hat, if I sample again I'll get a different value of p hat. How different are these values going to be? In other words, how much variation would I expect in these sample proportions? And so I can in some way capture that by this idea of confidence interval. <coughs> so here we calculate the confidence interval based on our sample data. Now here in the, in the hypothesis test situation, we specify a value for p from the null hypothesis. In this case, we don't. Actually, we're trying to estimate p here. Now, these blue and, and uh, uh, red are supposed to be colors here. So, this is going to be red, and this is going to be blue, and so on. So, that doesn't matter at all. So, here, there are several ways of calculating confidence interval. One is to use the normal approximation, and the other is to use the exact binomial distribution. Now, this normal distribution idea was popular and probably is still popular. It's based on tables because previously we had no computers. But we should actually use the exact binomial distribution, and we should use the full power that we have available, computing power that we have available. So, there are many ways of doing this. The basic idea is this if I have a binomial distribution, binomial NP, we observe this case successes in n files essentially. If I take a look at a sample and then estimate this p hat, I will get p hat is k over n. Now, I want the values of p here, the range of values of p, so that if I pick a value of pl, so essentially p here yeah, has values in this range 0 to 1. And if I observed my p hat somewhere here, I want to know probability being bigger than that. Now, depending, depending on the value of p, this will change. If I make p smaller and smaller and smaller, the probability being bigger than this will decrease. So I the value of pl here, such that probability of bigger than p hat is 0 0.025. And then on the other side, I want a value, if I go higher and higher and higher this way, probability of being less than p hat will decrease as well. So I want a value here, which is the upper end, pu. So probability of being, probability of being less than p hat is 0 0.025. And this, we say, is a 95% confidence interval. So if I make it simple and look at the normal distribution, the idea here is I want the probability here of 0 0.025. And a probability here of 0 0.025 symmetrically placed. So the middle probability is 0.95. And that's why this is a 95% confidence interval. If I change the probability of 95%, if I make it say 90%, then what's left over is 10%, and I want in this case 5% over here, and 5% over here, and the middle bit is now 90%, and that makes a 90% confidence interval. So let's see how we can calculate that. There are many ways of doing this in R. Here is one. The copper pearson interval is based on the exact binomial distribution. And so we're going to use this to work out a 95% confidence interval for the Swain versus Lemama data. In that case, we had eight successes, eight of the panel were African Americans out of 100. So AK equals eight here n equals 100, alpha 0 0.05, so alpha is the probability in the tails, the total of this. So alpha 0.2 needs to be here, and alpha 0.2 needs to be here, so the total is alpha, and I've made that 0 0.05, so what I'm getting is a 90% confidence interval, so it's two-sided, and you can see what I'm getting here is two-sided, this is the lower end, this is the upper end. So what I found here so far is that my 95% confidence interval for P is the lower end is 0 0.0352, let's say, and the upper end is 0 0.1516. So that's a confidence interval, an idea of where the most likely values in some way of my p is going to be based on my data that I've got. The other way is to use directly the normal distribution. So we can use the fact that p hat is approximately normal. 
with mean p and variance p 1 minus p over n. What we're going to do over here is work out essentially values around this. So this is a little easy in many ways if you look at it uh, as a normal distribution. I want a value probability of 0 0.025 over here if I'm looking at 95% confidence interval and a value of 0 0.25 there. So that gives me in the end a 95% confidence interval. So I get 0.95 in the middle over here. So since we know that p hat is approximately normal, I won't go through all the details here. The main thing is in the end, what we require to do is find the value of the z distribution here and the value over here. So the middle probability is 0.95 and that number happens to come to 1.96 and negative 1.96. So based on that, essentially what we will do is from p this is the, the statement that probability that p hat lies well that p lies between p hat here and there essentially comes to a minus alpha now this isn't quite a correct probability statement because of course p is a constant in some ways although we're thinking of this as a probability so the confidence interval in the end works out to be simply this it is well before that the problem here is that we don't know this uh, quantity here which is that's in the deviation of p hat, and the variance of p hat is p1 take p over n. So its square root is the standard deviation. And we can't do this calculation because we don't actually have the value of p. So what we do is we plug in the sample value p hat there. And then instead of calling this standard deviation of p hat, we call this the standard error of p hat. Just be careful with the name. Standard error is based on data. Or, sorry, standard error is based on the estimate. And standard deviation is the actual true value of the standard deviation of the parameter. So, in the end, the thing I'm interested in is that the confidence interval comes out to be this. It's the p hat value I observe, and I go above that by this z value times the standard error of p hat. And I also go below that by the same value. And this z value depends on the level of confidence I have. If it's 95% confidence, and I want a probability of 0.95 in the middle over here, so that means I want a probability of 0 0.025 over here, and 0 0.25 over here, and this is symmetric. And because it's symmetric, the value of z I get in both those places is the same, but one is positive, one is negative. So I don't really care about the negative value. I just take the, this value here, as I said, I require the plus or minus there anyway. And that's worked out very nicely from R. And the function here is Q norm. So Q norm will give me the Z value for a probability. So I can get the value from R. And the function I use is Q norm. So if I, point, if I use 0 0.025, I get the value negative 1.96, but if I use the high end value, which is going to be 0.975, I get the 1.96 here. So that's how I get the values for the value of z given the probability, this q norm. And so, as a calculation then, an example over here, the confidence interval I get in this case for, that's what I've just said, if I change the value of uh, the probability in the tails, you have 90% probability, then it's 0 0.1 in total and 0 0.05 in each side. So in this case, the Q norm will be 0 0.95. So that's 0.95 and that's 0 0.05. That means the total tails will be giving me 0.1. And likewise, this is 1.96. In this the case, you see what's going on here is this is 0 0.025. And so there, they also have 0 0.025, but I get 0.975 there. So, if I do the same calculation for the Swain versus Alabama case, what I get here is p hat is 8 over 100, so my 95% confidence interval is 0 0.08 minus 1.96 times 0 0.08 over 0 0.08 times 0 0.92 over 100. So it's going to be this idea of plus or minus 
and I, I see an error here that I'm going to fix up. And the way it works out is, I'm going to see the variance was p hat 1 minus p hat over n. So its square root is what I need over here. And so these numbers aren't correct. What I require is this number here, 0 0.08.92 over 100 square root of. So please change those numbers. I'll change the slides. The same over here, 0 0.08, 0 0.92 over 100 square root of. So if I require to change my calculations as well, so that uh, I've got p hat is k over n, and standard error is p hat times 1 minus p hat over square root of n. Now that's not quite right, because the standard error actually should be the square root of the whole lot. So I'll change my calculations on my slides and put them online. You can do the same. But what you'll find is that once you've done that, you can compare this confidence interval with the one we calculated earlier and see what the differences are. That's enough for this week. Thank you. Bye.